So if you have any disputes on site, you would refer to this document to say that XYZ is not good enough and you need to fix uh, your poor shitty workmanship. <laughs> G'day and welcome to the Making with Miles podcast. I'm Miles Clark and we are here for another exciting episode about building and construction as well as some advice in regards to the real estate industry through the lens of a building inspector. Now there's two formats to the podcast. We have the shed. The shed is where we discuss all things related to building constructions, renovations, even home maintenance things, bits and pieces like that, as well as the items with regards to the real estate industry and sort of my thoughts and feelings on a few things that I've come across um, in my journey in the industry itself. As well as that, there is also the journey. The journey is where we talk a bit of personal development uh, every now and then. Reason being is because I like it and I think it's necessary for a lot of people to be better. And if I can help someone out, then um, good hustle. So on this episode, we will be discussing all things in relation to the guides to standards and tolerances. Now, the only time you really give uh, two shits about this subject is if you're getting a new home built or you're getting um, some construction works undertaken by a builder, you're in a contract with a builder, and this is simply the standards and tolerances that they need to work within for it to be a an acceptable job. In the building industry, we have building regulations, we have building contracts, we have building acts, we have building standards. There's all these types of components that come together, but in some circumstances, they are not detailed enough as to what is acceptable workmanship. So the Guides to Standards and Tolerances is a document that's been put in place and has been accepted across the industry by builders as an acceptable minimum standard for their construction practices. What you need to understand about this, it's not best practice. This is the bare minimum. So if you have any disputes on site, you will refer to this document to say that XYZ is not good enough and you need to fix uh, your poor shitty workmanship uh, unless stated otherwise so in some circumstances there might be uh, a building regulation or some other sort of requirement that might uh, supersede the standards and tolerances those will supersede the standards and tolerances every day of the week what the guides to standards and tolerances talks about so they talk about how to inspect how it's considered to be inspecting a new home or checking out for defects you can't have a light that's on the angle of the wall and you're trying to find any sort of defects and issues like that. You need to be 1.5 meters away from the defect or the surface that you're inspecting. Say it's a wall or a ceiling or a floor um, and 600 mil away from such things as joinery items or, or fixtures and finishings that you would see in your bathrooms, kitchens, all that sort of stuff. All right. So there's like a distance associated with it. If you can't see it from 1.5 meters away, you can deem that issue as acceptable. Do I agree with that? Not really, but... That's the way it is written. The other things it discusses within the guides and standards and tolerances is all the subject heading lines associated with construction. So it goes through site works, footings, slabs, setting out the structure, masonry, framing, wall cladding, roofing, plumbing, windows and doors, plastering and rendering, painting, floor and wall tiling, wet areas, decks and balconies, timber floor linings, electrical, pools and spas, restumping, and then general items which is more or less like some glazing and other sort of general bits and pieces. Now, the important part about that is each of these line items is broken out again and it tells you what you can and what you can't get away with in construction. So walls, for example, would be having the wall out of plumb or the wall's not straight, gaps in architraves, gaps in doors, perps you're going to have in your masonry, discoloration in masonry is probably a big one, cladding defects, window installation processes, uh, roof plumbing, so scratches on roof, sheets, you know, all these types of things. So this is important because what it does, it actually gives a pretty clear understanding as of what quality you will be getting uh, in your new construction build if this wasn't in place can technically install a door and have horrible gaps all around it and it can still function as a door but it will just look like shit this is what you can fall back on to say hang on mate mr builder the quirks aren't they're not consistent all the way around there's a gap's too big down here it's horrible it's shit you need to fix it in that situation the builder can be like well it works as a door so too bad it's going to be a door that's what it is this document itself is something you can sort of fall back to and just say right this is where it doesn't comply all right or it can go the other way around so let's say your wall's a little bit out of plumb and you see it in the tiling, for example, like maybe on a, on a quirk or something. Builder itself can say, well, I'm sorry, but it does still comply. It still falls within the guides and standards and tolerances. I'm sorry it's not absolutely perfect, but it is still acceptable within the building industry. So too bad, you're gonna have to live with it. It's a reasonable finish. If you're in a situation like that, you have a super hardcore keen eye for detail 
or he's just a fussy asshole. The stands and tolerances, to be honest, are, are pretty reasonable in regards to a standard to work towards. Now, most good quality builders ideally will be working best practice, so they want zero tolerances. They want to be perfect as best as they can be. But if there are any disputes or any concerns or any issues with regards to the workmanship, everything's going to fall back to this document itself. Now, if you're looking for this document, um, I found this online for free through the VBA. Obviously, that's here in Victoria. This document is consistent uh, throughout other states. You'll just have to go search through your specific states, um, building authority, and on there, most likely will have the guides, the stands, and tolerances. If not, they all do mesh within another. So it is a, a national document. Some things change a little bit here and there with regards to some specific states, but more or less, that's the standard that we're working with it. So if you're getting your house built and you're not too sure if the quality is correct, this is the document you're gonna be using, okay? You can print it out, get it for free, as I said before. You can make sure that the builder is doing everything compliant. Now, this is what this document itself is what new home inspectors would work off uh, to ensure that the quality of the workmanship that the property is adequate enough, right? It's acceptable. They comply with the guides, and standards, and tolerances, and obviously any building regulations and compliance. Um, well, then the build is fine and that is what it is. So to recap with regards to the quality and workmanship of a building and construction project, it's all going to come down to the guides, the standards and the tolerances. So get the document itself, understand what you can, what they can get away with, what they can't get away with, but more or less, you're just going to fall back onto this document themselves. Professional building inspectors will fall back onto this document to ensure that the builders are up to standard and working to a acceptable quality of finish. So get yourself a copy of the guides to standards and tolerances so you can understand what's going on. If you have any questions in regards to this, please reach out, we're happy to answer them as best as practicable. If you found any help in this at all, please like, subscribe, share, all those good things, and we will see you on the next one. Yeah.